Hello, Tony. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. How, How are, are you? you? I'm okay. You know, it's kind of hot, right? It's really warm. <laughs> yes. Okay. But what about you? I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I'm glad to, to travel into the El Salvador. I was in La Palma, eh, Citala, Las Pilas, and, uh, and uh, a very high land uh, space in El Salvador and very cold, very, very cool uh, really? um, weather. That is good, I think, because here in San Salvador it was really hot the whole day. Exactly, exactly. Oh, it's my too God. hot in San Salvador and around. Uh, the, the capital, but in the places that I I stayed today, um, is was very cool, very very cool. Okay, that is awesome. All right, so you are on your way home. Yes. Uh, right now I go to my house, but I'm still in in El Rio Lempa, Colima. Oh my Maybe, God! Uh, one hour travel to my house. Yes. Yes, Tony. Okay, so today was a really busy day. Busy, busy. <laughs> it was busy. Yeah, I, I imagine. Okay, Tony, that is well. That is good because you visited different places, right? Which is good, I think. Beautiful places. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is cool. All right, thank you, Tony. All right, so, uh, be careful. Okay. okay? Thank you. Okay. All very, right. Very careful. Thank you. Okay. So we also have Emerson. Hello, Emerson. Good evening. Good evening, Miss. Hello. How are you? I'm okay. You are okay. So what about your day? How was it, Emerson? Today I have uh, a day interesting because I do several things. Okay. All right. So, and right now you're at home? Yes, I am. I am at home. Okay, perfect. All right, guys. Well, we're going to start with today's agenda. Thank you, Emerson, okay? So we're going to start with today's class. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, share the agenda that we have. Well, we are going to start with the warm up. We also have, uh, you know, unit four, which is about loyalty. And today we are going to cover a really interesting topic, okay, which is very important for us. And the topic is going to be how to avoid double negatives. That is going to be the grammar topic for today, okay? How to avoid double negatives. We also have listening quizzes and we have reading quizzes okay we also have the speaking time and we have the wrap-up and of course we have an activity from the book all right um so we have abigail good evening we also have carla sofia okay then guys we are going to start uh, with the warm-up and as a warm-up we are going to start with quick fire vocabulary so let's see the quick fire vocabulary, guys, if you remember, is that I'm going to give you a category and you are going to mention all of the words that you have in mind about that category. For example, if I say animals, you need to mention different animals in one minute, okay? The purpose of, of this game is like to know how many words you can say per minute. Right. So in that way, you are going to identify if you need to improve some areas, right, or not. So in this case, we are going to start with Emerson. Okay. I see that Luis Miguel, you are on your way home as well. Same as Tony. Okay. I can see that you are driving. Good evening, Luis Miguel. Okay. So Emerson. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Okay. Um. Let me see. Is Emerson there? I think that no, Emerson. I think that Emerson is having issues with the internet. Let me see. Well, Carla, are you there? 
Hello. Yes. Hello. Good evening, Carla. How are you? Uh, fine. You're fine. What about your day? How was it? Uh, very busy. <laughs> it was very busy. Okay. But you are at home? Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Carla, we are going to start the warm up with you. Okay. So okay. um, I'm going to give you the category and you need to say as many words as possible. Yeah. In one minute. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. So we're going to start with adjectives. Adjectives. Okay. Ready? Adjective like a uh, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like beautiful. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Go. Um, when beautiful, pretty, uh, um, awful, slowly, okay. <laughs> fast, fast, uh, fast, uh, mm -hmm. angry, angry, yes, happy, uh, sad. Sad, okay. Smile, smiley, smiley, yes. Mm. Enjoying, no, <laughs> no, mm, no. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, all right. So you mentioned around 10 adjectives, it's okay. All right, but we need to improve. We need to improve. Yes, we need to improve. All right. So let me see. Um. Okay. So next is Carlos Omar. Yes, Carlos Omar, you are there. I know that you are there. Okay, Carlos Omar, I'm going to give you the category, and you need to give me as many words as possible. Okay, about that category. Yeah. Another word. Yes, but another category, okay? Your category is going to be verbs. Verbs in present. Okay. Go. Play, uh, jump, eat, um, run, swim, and walk, speak, um, ride, and <laughs> mm -hmm. um, try and enter mm -hmm. um describe yes um, good yes um, in order okay Clean, wash, okay, 15, okay, 15, 15 uh, verbs, mm, which is good, okay, Carlos Amar, is good, okay, Emerson, don't worry, okay, thank you. All right, so guys, let's continue. Okay, let's continue and now let's move and we are going to start with the main topic for today, which is unit four. Remember, this is the last unit and it is about loyalty, yeah? So today we are going to start with this question, all right? How would you define ineffective and effective ways to increase awareness? Yeah, remember that we have been covering brand awareness. We have been um, studying different techniques or strategies. Yesterday, we actually present, right, the benefits of increasing brand awareness. Yeah, so today we are going to mention some ineffective and effective ways to increase awareness. Yeah. So let's see, we're going to start with ineffective ways to increase awareness. Uh, Carlos Omar, help us reading one and two. Let me see if we have, um, well, uh, is Jonathan there? Yes, miss. Thank you. Okay, Jonathan, three and four. 
please. And the last one, Wendy. Well, Wendy, no. Wendy is connecting. Wendy is not here. And, mm -hmm. and the last one, number five, please. Uh, Maurice, are you there? But Maurice is saying that he is as a listener. He cannot participate. Okay. The last one, Jonathan, as well, please. Thank you, Carlos. Go. Okay. Ineffective ways to increase awareness. Number one, lack to targeting. Trying to reach a broad audience without a specific target can be ineffective. It's important to identify and focus on the specific demographic or market segment that is most likely to be interested in the product or service. Number two. Yes. Random, random or inconsistent marketing. Effort. Inconsistent or sporadic, sporadic marketing is for can handle awareness building. It's important to have a consist, consistent and consistent and integ, integrate marketing strategy that allies aligns with the brands message and goals thank you number three mm -hmm. poor brand messaging if the brand's message is unclear confusing or does not uh, resonate with a target agency it can lead to ineffective awareness build, building the message should be compared compelling relevant and easily understood Yes. Number four, uh, neglecting digital channels. Yes. In today's digital age, neglecting online marketing channels can limit the reach and effectiveness of awareness, awareness building effort. It's important to have a strong online present, uh, present thought. Oh, you can see. Uh, websites, social social media, shares, uh, engine optimizations, and mm -hmm. other digital marketing strategies. Mm -hmm. And number five, lack or engagement. One way communication without engaging engaging the target audience can be ineffective. It's important to interact with the audience listen to the ear feedback and provide opportunity for them to engage with the brand. With the brand. Thank you. Okay, guys. Um, okay, this is just for us to know, right? When it comes to ineffective ways to increase awareness, we can mention some uh, ideas. Yes, of course, there are many other ones. Yeah, but those are some ideas that we can mention. So we have lack of targeting yeah so it, it says that it's very important for us to identify and focus on the specific demographic or a market segment okay in this case why because we need to identify the ones that are most likely to be interested in the product or service yeah we can also mention number two all right, this one is ineffective as well. Number two, random or inconsistent marketing efforts. Yeah, I don't know if you have seen many um, probably brands, right, that they do not create any type of advertising. Yeah, they sometimes post one image, but they don't do it like too often. They do it sporadic. And that is something bad sometimes, okay? It's very important to be consistent, yeah? Number three, poor brand messaging, right? In this case, uh, whenever we say that the message, right, does not resonate with the target audience. Mm -hmm. So it says that the message should be compelling relevant and easily understood. Do you remember what is compelling? 
what did I say was compelling? In other words, but in English, of course, right? Sure. What is compelling? It was mm, okay. So instead of you saying very interesting, you can say it is compelling. So compelling is a word to say very interesting. Yeah, it is a compelling book. It is a compelling movie. It is a compelling message. Yeah, when something is very interesting, you can use compelling as an adjective. It is an adjective, okay? Then we also have number four, which is neglecting digital channels. Uh -huh. And this one is very important. It says that in today's digital age, neglecting online marketing channels can limit the reach and effectiveness of awareness building efforts. And this is almost the same as number two. I mean, those are like linked, number two and four. It's important to have a strong online presence through websites, social media, and different strategies. So it shouldn't be sporadic. It shouldn't be, right? Then we also have the lack of engagement. One-way communication. Guys, what is one-way communication? Uh -huh. Maybe the TV or the radio is in one, one way for the, the, um, the, the channel of, of the um, um, of communication and the second and the and the the end or the the public it doesn't um, talk or respond to the mm -hmm. publicity in a in an effective way. Mm -hmm. Maybe I don't know. Okay. Okay, the uh, one way, yes, eh, um, Tony, you are correct, okay? When it comes to communication, guys, the one way communication is basically whenever you say something, whenever you say something, but you do not allow the other person to reply back, yeah? And basically in marketing, we have one-way communication most of the time because you cannot give your opinion about advertising. I mean, you won't send a message to the company just to give your opinion about the advertising, right? I mean, maybe some would do, but it's not that often, right? So the one-way communication is basically whenever you send a message, but the other person cannot reply back. That is one way communication. Es una comunicación en sentido único. All right. So that means es lo que usted comunica y la otra persona no puede responder. Solamente usted manda la información y la persona no responde because it's marketing, right? So it, um, it should be one way communication in marketing, right? So in this case, it says that it's important, and look at this, okay? Sometimes it's important to interact with the audience, and that is true. That's uh, why sometimes you see different, maybe pages that they create some trivia time, right? Because in that way, they can use a different type of communication and know uh, one-way communication. Uh -huh. um, all right, so then let's move and let's talk about the positive things. So which are effective ways to increase awareness? How can we create or how can we increase awareness? Remember, awareness means conciencia, yes? Yeah? So, how can we create 
uh, or increase awareness when it comes to marketing. Yeah. Uh, Carlos Omar, help us reading one and two, three and four, Carla. And the last one, let me see if we already have Wendy. Yes. And number five, Wendy. Thank you, okay. Carlos. Yes. Number one, uh, targeted mic mar marketing, identifying and understand understanding the target audience is essential for effective awareness building. Ta tailoring tailoring marketing as for to to reach the specific demographic or market segment that is most likely to be in, interested in the product or service can mm -hmm. maximize, maximize the impact of, of marketing campaigns. Yes. Number two, consistent brand message, messages. Uh, consistency in brand messages across different marketing channels helps to to build a strong and recognize recognizable brands identify uh -huh. identity. identity identity yes the the message should can be the brand's unique unique value proposition and resonate with the target audience audience okay thank you three and four number three multi-channel approach 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 utilize utilize sign utilizing utilizing a combination of marketing channel such a traditional advertising digital marketing social media and content market can increase the reach and effectiveness of awareness building building force different channels allow for broader broader exposure mm -hmm. and engagement with the target audience yes four uh, for compelling content, mm -hmm. creating high quality and really relevant content can attract and engage the target audience. Content such as blog posts, videos, infographics, and social media. Posts should provide value, educate, entertain, or solve problems for the audience. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Wendy. Rita, teacher. Okay. Postman refers a word of month. Encouraging, testify. Customer to share to share their positive experience and recommend recommend the brand to other can be a powerful way to increase awareness, offering incentives of referral programs. I can incentive incentivize customer to, to spread the word about the brand. Okay, thank you. All right, guys. Um, basically, this is going to be just some effective ways to increase awareness. Yeah, those are just some ways to increase awareness. And what we can mention is, well, this one, which is very important, the targeted marketing, Okay, remember that we need to be able to uh, reach the specific, oh, yeah, I don't know if you're, can you hear me? Yes, I think that yes, right? Yes. Okay, 
Okay, thank you. So we need to be able to make efforts to reach the specific demographic or market segment. Yeah, the consistent brand messaging as well. This is very important. Okay. And the multi channel approach, which is a multi channel approach. Remember that we have different type of channels. Yeah. And what, whenever we actually say uh, different channels, guys, we mean the following, right? We have traditional advertising, which is digital marketing, social media, and content marketing. So those can increase the reach and effectiveness of awareness building efforts. So we, we can use different type of tools, yeah? different type of uh, platforms, I would say. Yeah, platforms. A compelling content, which is crucial, which is very important, right? For us, whenever we want to create brand awareness, compelling content, remember, remember that compelling means very interesting. Yeah. So compelling content, very interesting content. So this one, it says that creating high quality, high quality and relevant content can attract and engage yeah the target audience uh -huh. and well yesterday we created a, uh, an infographic actually right so those are very common if you go to any type of uh you know website from any company so you will see that they use infographics they use videos they use uh blog posts yeah, they use um, posts, normal posts, right, etc. But this type of content should be compelling. Yeah. And then the last one, which is number five, is going to be the customer referrals and word of mouth, which is um, a way, yes, it is an effective way to increase awareness. Yes. So offering incentives, of course, right? Sometimes if you get something, you spread uh, the word, right? So you mention the brand, etc. So those are just effective ways to increase awareness. So now let's move guys to the information from the book. So we have Olivia and Leo. So let me see. Help us being Olivia and Mayra. Are you there? Yes, teacher. Okay, thank you. Mayra, can you please be Olivia? And Leo, please, uh, Carlos Omar. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to set an online business selling handmade dresses, but I don't know. I don't know nothing about branding or marketing. You mean you don't know anything, Olivia? To a start, you could stop change, changing the logo of your business. I noticed, I noticed, I noticed the changes is it at least five times last week and fit the spelling in your slogan, designing happiness, that's not correct. I never noticed nothing about the spelling mistake when I made when I made it, but you know, it's made it look original. Okay. You mean you never notice anything? I think you better have a cons consultant, Olivia. They will help you with the business. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Guys, what can you notice on this um, conversation? What can you notice? Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, Olivia is a new a new um, uh, business, business 
como mujer de negocios o empresaria? Ah, uh, yeah, business woman. Ajá. Ok, a business woman. Business woman, esa. Ya. Yeah. Mm, ok, could be. Yes, could be. What else? Uh -huh. What else can you notice, guys, on this conversation? What things do you notice? When it comes to, to the uh, different phrases that are highlighted, what can you tell me about that? Uh -huh. um, if you see, we have, I don't know nothing. You don't know anything, says Leo. I never notice nothing. And Leo says, you mean you never notice anything. Guys, this is uh, this is very important for you to pay attention. Why? Because most of the time, whenever you learn English, we tend to make those mistakes. So in English, we have this type of um, this type of topic, okay, which is the double negatives. So whenever we have a double negative and we use, this is very common. Um, if you listen to native speakers, they make this mistake whenever they say, I don't know nothing, right? But that is a mistake that we shouldn't make because we are learning English. You are learning the language. You shouldn't speak like them because you are studying the language. In this case, Leo says, you mean you don't know anything. As you can see on sentence number one, I don't know nothing. We have double negative. Why? Because we have I don't and then we have nothing. I don't know nothing about that. And that is incorrect in speaking and writing. So how can we fix that? You or I don't know anything. Okay. So when you say, yo no sé nada, I don't know anything. It will be incorrect if you say, I don't know nothing. Okay. And then we also have another example. It says, I never noticed nothing. Teacher, but I don't see any negative right there. I don't see double negative. Yes, we have double negative because never is something negative. So we have never, which is negative, and we have nothing, which is negative as well. So in order for us to correct this one, we should change, you never notice anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's continue. Then we also have um, some definition, okay? Just for you to probably um, like understand this information, this topic in a better way. So double negatives in a standard English, a double negative is when a sentence contains two negative words. Two negative words, don't, nothing. Never, nothing. Two negative words, yeah? And that is called double negatives, yeah? So this one is to emphasize denial or opposition. They should be avoided, yeah? They should be avoided in formal writing or speaking because they can make your writing or speaking unclear. And we have an example, okay? The example is, I didn't do nothing. Tony. Teacher, yes. only to understand by the correct way, the double negative is, um, is a phrase that uh, are incorrect or we can use double negative phrases. 
Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if if I understand, but the correct way, because yes. if I say that I I don't know nothing is incorrect, but I don't know anything is correct. Is correct. Uh, um, to understand better, no yes. debo ocupar doble negativa. Yes. Okay. Okay, mm-hmm. I need to change one of the double negative for one positive. Maybe positive. that is the reason that I use I don't know anything. Correct. Yes. And we need to pay attention to the word, right? Because nothing is negative and anything is negative, but it's considered something positive. Yeah, but you, you got it, Sonia, like that, as you mentioned, okay? So in this case, um, why? Because it might be unclear. The message will be unclear, guys, if you use that, okay? And, and if somebody is evaluating your English and we say this type of things, they would evaluate your English as a low uh, level, yeah? So I didn't do nothing how can we change this sentence to make it correct? I didn't do nothing. And the idea is, yo no hice nada. That is the idea. How can we make it correct? Uh, didn't I do anything. Didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. You see? I didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now we have more examples. Look at this. I don't have no money. Or I didn't see nothing. Or Look at this one. I couldn't find it nowhere. All of them are incorrect. How can we make the first one correct? I don't have no money. I don't have money. I don't have money. Which is another way to say the same idea, but in a different structure. So Jonathan said, I don't have money, okay? Which is good. Which is another sentence that we can use to say the same thing. Teacher, if, if I say I have it, is correct? Mm, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Carlos, can you please repeat? If I say, if I say I haven't no money, it's I, Oh, I haven't no money? Oh. No, it's not correct. No, it's okay. not correct, okay? In this case, the other way to say the same idea, but with a different structure, in this case would be, I have no money. I have no money is like saying, I don't have money. Or we can also say the same thing, but we need to add this word, I don't have any money, like that. And all of them are correct, all of those three. So I don't have money, or I don't have any money, or I have no money. All of them are correct. Now, what about number two? I didn't see nothing. I didn't see anything. Yes, I didn't see anything. Yeah? Or we can say, 
will be I couldn't see anything. I couldn't see anything as well. Or I see not. I saw nothing because the idea is in simple past. Oh, so nothing. Okay. It should be I saw nothing. Mm -hmm. Now, what about number three, the last one? I couldn't find it nowhere. I couldn't find it anywhere. Excellent. I couldn't find it anywhere. Mm -hmm. You see? Yes. So we need to avoid using double negatives. That is the main topic for today when it comes to grammar. Yes? Mm -hmm. Do you have any doubt? Any question? No, no questions? Okay, okay. Let's move then. So guys, um, let me see. Jose, can you please help us reading everything? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, two negative sentences are considered ungrammatical in English. Recommendation is to avoid using them since the result is that a statement like I don't know nothing could be interpreted differently as I don't know something. The contrast, we um, don't publish nothing unrelated to the benefits of our products. We don't publish anything. Oh, sorry. I read it. I made a mistake. Don't worry. Uh, we don't publish okay. We don't publish anything related to the benefits of our products. Mm -hmm. The company sales after the event. The company didn't get any additional sales after the event. The experts about the drastic change of image in our products. The experts never said anything about the drastic change of image in our products. Thank you. All right, guys. I don't know if it is my internet connection, Uh, we can hear you. Yes, you can hear me. Okay, so I, I, I don't know if it is. Yeah, okay. But okay, so I'm going to continue, guys. If you cannot hear me, please let me know. Okay. So yes, thank you, Jose. In this case, we have a short definition from the book. Yes, two negatives in a sentence are considered ungrammatical in English. I mean, incorrect. Yeah, incorrect. And we have uh, some examples, guys. So as we covered before, we cannot use double negation. We don't publish nothing. That would be incorrect because we have two negatives. We need to change. We don't publish anything. Yeah. The company didn't get no additional double negatives. Didn't, no. So we need to say the company didn't get any, any additional sales after the event. Whenever you have no, we need to replace no with any. Yeah, the same thing as we did right here. I don't have any money because we have no. It should be any. The same thing right here. Didn't get no additional, didn't get any additional. The experts never said nothing, never negative, nothing negative, never said anything to make it correct. Yeah. So you see. Okay. So 
So now let's move and let's create, well, let's resolve, yeah? Some sentences right here, okay? So number one, it says, correct the double negative mistake in each sentence. Number one. The department doesn't know nothing about branding. How can we make that one positive? I mean, correct. The department doesn't know about branding. Mm, the department doesn't know about branding, okay? But we need to use this. The Which, department uh -huh. knows nothing about branding. Okay, yes, that would be correct. But now we doesn't. We doesn't. We need to change this. But what is the other word that we need to use? Anything. Uh -huh. The department doesn't know anything about branding. Correct. The department doesn't know anything about branding. That, that would be the correct answer, right? Because we need to use this word, but we need to use it in the positive way, which is anything. What about number two? The manager never tells us nothing about the plans to improve the brand of the business. How can we make number two correct? The manager never tells us anything about the plans to improve the brand of the business. Correct. The manager never tells us anything about the plans to improve the brand of the business. Very good. What about number three? I don't have nothing against billboards, but the truth is they are too expensive. Uh -huh. which will be the correct sentence for number three. I don't have anything against billboards. Correct. I don't have anything against billboards, but the truth is they are too expensive. Thank you, Tony. Number four. We didn't get no increase in sales after advertising on Facebook. Uh -huh. We didn't get no increase. How can we make it correct? Uh -huh. Maybe we didn't get any increase in sales correct. after advertising. Yes, paper. that is correct. Thank you, Tony. That would be, we didn't get any increase in sales after advertising on Facebook. Yes. And number five, okay, which is the customers don't want no change in price. Customer don't want any change in price. In price, thank you, Emerson. Yes, the customers don't want any change in prices. So you see, guys. I mean, very easy, right? It's not difficult. Okay, it's not difficult. Hmm? Okay, any question, any doubt, something that is not clear? I literally almost dropped out. I literally got so loud. I almost texted my friend. So. No? 
Okay. All right. Let's move. All right. Okay. Guys, on the book, we have this activity, which is about the following. Okay. It says rank. Okay. This is number one. Rank the following tips to improve brand recognition being one, the most effective, and number five, the least effective. And we have right here, those are the different opinions, okay? Different, like, I would say, maybe options, okay? So, and then what we need to do is that we need to discuss the tips, yes, right here, and we can, and we need to answer which are the most effective and which are not that effective to boost brand recognition. So first of all, we need to rank. We need to rank the tips from uh, one to five, being five the least effective. And then you need to decide which are the most effective and which are not that effective to boost brand recognition. That's what we need to do, okay? We need to work on this. Do you have any question right now about this activity? Something that is not clear? No? Okay. So we are going to work on this. Remember, first of all, rank the tips. Discuss with your partner, okay? Which is number one, two, three, four, five. Five is the least effective, el menos efectivo. Y el número uno es el más efectivo de los tips. And then, which are the most effective? Lo va a responder, obviamente, con esto. Con lo que hizo en el number six. Yeah? Okay. So we are going to work on this. Basically, you are going to uh, speak because this is speaking and then you use the side, right? Which is one, two, three, four, five, and basically that's it. And then you choose your answer. Yeah, from number six, okay? So we are going to work on that, guys. I'm going to give you around 10 to 15 minutes most. Okay, the most, because we have a lot of things to cover today. We have three reading quizzes and we have two listening quizzes. Okay, so let's work on this. May you share it, please? Okay. Wait a moment. Uh... Hello. Hello. Class number. Okay. 
by great gospel service, consistently remind you to try to find the other humanity. Think <laughs> the number one maybe provide great customer service. The most important. Uh -huh. And then the middle I have said story that speaks. Um, the the second uh, could be consistently remind your target market that you are actively doing business. I I think we have have uh, hair less. See what what Art. say ruido in English? <laughs> Noise. Noise. Okay. Oh. Okay. Number one, this. Number two, this. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Maybe three provide value. 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 Provide values. Or maybe use the name logo in all your marketing materials. It's important. <laughs> because it's the image from your business. That? Yes. Hmm. The bell of a hair fell. <laughs> What's a mean the bell of a hair fell? Is that a like a a feeling? Uh connect with the brand. Mm -hmm. I see. It could be like a, a slogan that describes that my company uh, have you in mind. I don't know if, if it's that idea. Um, I, the, the heartfelt story, I mean, heartfelt is like saying, um, it's like saying a strong feeling, a strong feeling, a heartfelt es un sentimiento bien fuerte, entonces develop a heartfelt story es desarrollar una historia que toque el corazón porque sí, lo hace sí. un sentimiento bien fuerte sería como una especie de digamos de frase de hacemos esto porque pensamos en ustedes yes like, um, pero el heartfelt es como eh, decir eh, Es como decir, eh, por ejemplo, like, realmente, pero que viene de sentimiento. 
Porque heartfelt means to create, to, to like, um, como crear un sentimiento fuerte. Eso significa heartfelt, crear un sentimiento fuerte. Pero como lo vamos a interpretar, porque si no, no tiene mucho sentido, ¿verdad? Entonces, acá, develop a heartfelt story that speaks to why you are in business. Entonces, aquí es como desarrolle o, o desarrollar una historia que, que cree una emoción en el cliente, ¿ok? O que cree una emoción fuerte, la cual hable del por qué usted está en el negocio. Como crear una historia que toque el corazón. ¿Es that efectivo o no? <laughs> I think I for me yes it could be but I, I put it at, at the at the end. Uh -huh. It depends uh -huh. because not not people identify with the history. Correct. But I don't know. Uh huh. Maybe for <laughs> okay. No, no. Which are the most effective and which are not The number seven is like to describe why we order this uh, in that way, right? Okay. Yes. That is the most effective. Like, uh, uh, brand. We choose. Because <laughs> and customer yep. is the most important for a company. Uh -huh. For for the companies. For the company. Yes. For. Okay. Oh, le ponemos más. Ah. Because if don't have customers, it happens. <laughs> happy. Because if we don't have happy customers, Uh -huh. What happens if you don't have happy customers? Uh, there you go. <laughs> uh -huh. There you go. Yes. They go. They go to um 
for the company. Uh -huh. They go to to another company. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. And we'll see. Okay, so in that case, Carla, uh, customer they go to other other companies, other. Uh -huh, other. Uh -huh. Very good. And the uh, uh -huh. not that effective, sorry, not that uh, not effective. That single that. Mm -hmm. Without that. Single that necessary. Okay. Is developed a her first. Sorry. That speaks. I can speak to why. You are in this. Because I know we know all people. Okay. Uh -huh. oh. uh, they can use our service. Seria. No. Um, okay. Our service. Uh, I think we don't have what is it? Word trade comma. Uh but they can use our how do you say comma? Comma. Comma comma. comma. <coughs> Maybe mm -hmm. uh, at, at the beginning. At the beginning, after mm -hmm. recognition, we chose. Chose. Okay. Yes, chose. Escogimos chose. Chose with one O. Uh, okay. Yes. Oh. Okay, ready? Yes. <laughs> yes, I think that yes, right. Okay, let's go back, okay, to the main room. Okay. Okay, so let's see, guys. Uh, Carla, can you please explain to us what you did with the team? Okay. Uh -huh. In our team, uh, yes. choose the most effective 
is uh, provide great customer service. Mm -hmm. uh, the second, consistently remind your target market that you are actively doing business. And the three, use the same logo in all your marketing materials because mm -hmm. it is necessary uh, the customers remember our image. Okay. Uh, number four, provide value exceed their value. 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 Yes. Provide value exceed their expectation. In number five, develop a hair fails. History that speaks to what you are in business. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, which are the most effective and which are not that effective to boost brand recognition? Recognition. Recognition. Okay. Uh, we say the most effective the boost brand recognition. We choose provide great customer service because mm -hmm. the customer is the most important for companies. Because if we don't have happy customer, they go to uh, another, go to other companies. Very good. And no defect is develop a uh, hairfell history that speaks to why you are in business because uh, no people identify with our history but they can use our service. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm, yes, I think that, well, uh, do you have any different opinions, somebody else about that? Mm-hmm. Um, I think, okay, I think in my in my opinion, um, yes, number one is provide great customer service, right? I think that number two could be also provide value and exceed their expectations because if they feel happy, right, with the service that you are delivering, so you are going to have happy customers, yeah? And then, yes, uh, and if you provide value and exceed their expectations, you are able to consistently remind your target market that you are actively doing business. So they are going to go back and buy. But if you uh, consistently remind your target market that you are actively doing business, but you don't exceed their expectations, you do not provide value. So number two will be pointless, right? But I mean, it's okay. I'm just mention how I think, right? Then use the same logo in all your marketing materials. Yeah, that should be number four, I think. And the last one, develop a heartfelt story. You have a great point on that because actually, yes, right? Mm, not all people identify, yes, with um, your uh, story, right? And that is true. That would be probably maybe the last, the least, the least effective. Very good. Okay, I really like that you added the explanation. Just Carla, um, the misspelling of heartfelt. Heartfelt. Heart. Uh huh. Because heart you added hair. Uh huh. Uh, heartfelt. <laughs> yeah, but it was okay. Just that. Okay. And um, okay, guys. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Carla. Okay. Excellent. All right, so let's continue, guys. Well, I'm going to take the attendance and then we are going to start with the quizzes that we have, okay? Because we have three uh, reading quizzes. We have a lot. Okay, guys, um, say present once you hear your name. Give me one second. Okay. <laughs> Let's see, guys. 
Atilio Ernesto Castillo. Present teacher. Thank you. Atilio, good to see you. Carlos Omar Linares Cañas. Present. Thank you. Yeah. Carlos Vladimir Rodríguez Díaz. Carlos Vladimir. Is not here, Vladimir. Eduardo Franco Núñez. Present teacher. Thank you, Eduardo. Emerson Ulises Monroy Calix. Present, Miss. Thank you. Fátima Gabriela Loza Castillo. Present, teacher. Thank you, Fátima. Jonathan José González Domínguez. Present, Miss. Yes, thank you, Jonathan. George Antonio Sánchez Quiñones. I think that George mentioned that he was on his way home. All right. José Bernardo López Montes. Yes. Oh. Present. Thank you. Juan Antonio Elías Flores. Yes. Um, I am muted. Present teacher. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Tony. Juan José Herrera Alvarenga. Present teacher. Thank you. Carla Sofía Argueta Chévez. Present. Thank you. Um, Kenya Elizabeth Rodríguez Elaya. Present teacher. Thank you, Kenya. Luis Miguel Corbera Enríquez. Present teacher. Thank you. Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. Present teacher. Thank you, Maurice. Um, Mayra Cecilia Peña de Aparicio. Present teacher. Thank you, Mayra. Nelly Lilibes Andrade García. Yes, Nelly is not here. Raúl Antonio Jordán Miranda. Present. Thank you. Sandra Abigail Bonilla Cano. Present. Thank you. And Wendy Maricela Ramirez Guevara. Present, teacher. Yes, thank you. All right, so guys, we're going to start with the reading quiz number six. Okay, um, let me send the link. So there you go. That is the, the link. And I'm going to share my screen so you can read the, the, the short reading, right? And if not, you can go to the spreadsheet and you will have this class and you will have all of the readings right there as well, okay? So, okay, so let me, let me share the, the screen and the passcode is reading, capital letters reading okay let me see yes okay guys i'll give you those are short readings those are not long okay those are very short so i'll give you uh, maybe i don't know maybe six minutes for you to answer this one okay if you need extra time just let me know but i will give you just six minutes try to read um fast yeah, and answer the questions. So there you go. Uh, I'll give you seven, okay? This is the first reading for the first quiz, the one that I sent. One moment. Okay. Okay.
Okay, thank you, Emerson. Let me see if most of you are done. Mm. Okay, guys, let's move, okay? And let's take the second one. Just let me check your scores. Mm, okay. Okay, I can see that some of you got 100, okay? The, the link for it. Yes. Uh, I have, uh, connected with the phone, like I have connected my phone. Okay. All right. There you go. Okay. That one is the link for the new one. And um, the passcode, the same reading. And the short reading is going to be this one. I'll give you six minutes. This one is simple as well, guys. Yeah, we just have three questions there.
All right, guys. So I can see that some of you got good scores, but I see other ones that uh, got probably a low score. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's say the last, the last reading quiz. Okay. Um, there you go. Try to read carefully, guys. Okay, read carefully. Yeah. So let me see if. Uh, yes, this one is the last one. Okay. And just let me double check. Let me open it. Yes. Uh, on this one, we have four questions. Okay. So it is longer than the other ones. And the passcode is the same, right? Reading, capital letters.
All right, guys. So let me see this course. Let me see. Okay. All right. I can see that most of you, okay, um, got good scores on the three of them. It's very important, guys, that we practice reading, okay? I know that sometimes we don't like to read, but it is very important, okay? Then let's move and let's take the first listening, okay? So open that link and the passcode is listening capital letters, okay? The same as always, listening. So on this one, we have um, three questions only. It's very short, okay? The, the, the recording is short, it's not long. I'm going to play it just two times because it's simple, guys. It's not difficult, okay? So let me share my screen and the audio. Open it, okay? And let me know once you are ready so I can play the recording. Ready, teacher. Okay, thank you. So here we go. Hi, I'm Randall, and joining me today, Emily and Aubrey, and we're going to be talking about this topic of defining success. What does it mean to you, Aubrey? Yeah, I think a big thing is, like, if we're talking professionally, would be to find a career that you don't hate, right? It's <laughs> something you enjoy doing, so you're not, like, walking to work and hoping secretly that you get hit by a truck, because <laughs> I've definitely been there, and that's not fun. Um <laughs> Also, the ability that you're you're not living paycheck to paycheck. You know, you can also save up money for a rainy day, or maybe you want to buy an expensive puppy or a brand new car. You know, just having the ability to save up for all of those things. <laughs> uh, well, Emily, what about you? What are your thoughts on defining success? I would completely agree with Aubrey. One of the big things for me, though, is having enough money to support my family. Uh, so I have a child, so making sure that he is well taken care of. And then I would also like to be well known in the ceramics art field. Oh, wow. And in what way would you like to be well known in terms of just the designs that you make and so forth? Yeah, the designs that I make so that if someone were to come across my work, they'd be like, oh, that's an Emily Thorpe work and not have to look at the name on the bottom. Great. All right, well, thank you very much for sharing some of those ideas on success. Thank you. Okay, so the last time. Hi, I'm Randall, and joining me today, Emily and Aubrey, and we're gonna be talking about this topic of defining success. What does it mean to you, Aubrey? Yeah, I think a big thing is, like, if we're talking professionally, would be to find a career that you don't hate, right? It's something you enjoy doing. So you're not like walking to work and hoping secretly that you get hit by a truck <laughs> because I've definitely been there and that's not fun. Um, <laughs> also the ability that you're, you're not living paycheck to paycheck. You know, right. you can also save up money for a rainy day or maybe you want to buy an expensive puppy or a brand new car, you know, just having the ability to save up for all of those things. <laughs> uh, well, Emily, what about you? What are your thoughts on defining success? I would completely agree with Aubrey. One of the big things for me though is having enough money to support my family. Uh, so I have a child, so making sure that he is well taken care of. And then I would also like to be well known in the ceramics art field. Oh, wow. And in what way would you like to be well known in terms of just the designs that you make and so forth? Yeah, the designs that I make so that if someone were to come across my work, they'd be like, oh, that's an Emily Thorpe work and not have to look at the name on the bottom. Great. All right, well, thank you very much for sharing some of those ideas on success. Thank you. Okay, ready? Yes, okay, perfect. Let me see. Mm 
Yeah, I think that it was kind of difficult. Mm, well, okay. And let's take the last one, okay? Let's take the last one. Let me see. Okay, there you go. Open it. Listening, capital letters is the passport. Yes. Yes, I can see that it was kind of difficult for most of you. Okay. Um, okay, guys, I'm going to play this recording twice. Yeah, twice. If you need an extra time, let me know. But if not, twice. Here we go. Hey, what happened to you? It's a long story. Okay, I love long stories. Well... Let me guess. You forgot your wife's birthday and she got angry. No. Actually, I was carrying some boxes down the stairs at home. And she pushed you? No, no. I was walking down the stairs at home when I tripped over our dog and fell and broke my arm and injured my shoulder. Boy, how's the dog? You look really sore, too. <laughs> well, I am. But I'm going to physical therapy three times a week, and they're trying to teach me some exercises to increase my strength. Good. So how long are your appointments? Well, they last about 50 minutes. Is the office nearby? Actually, it's across the street from my office, so it's really convenient. You can't beat that. Yeah, and it should help me get back to where I was before the accident. And I really want to play tennis again. Well, maybe now at least I have a chance to beat you. <laughs> In your dreams. Okay, the last time. Hey, what happened to you? It's a long story. Okay, I love long stories. Well... Let me guess. You forgot your wife's birthday and she got angry. No. Actually, I was carrying some boxes down the stairs at home. And she pushed you? No. No. I was walking down the stairs at home when I tripped over our dog and fell and broke my arm and injured my shoulder. Boy, how's the dog? You look really sore, too. <laughs> well, I am. But I'm going to physical therapy three times a week, and they're trying to teach me some exercises to increase my strength. Good. So how long are your appointments? Well, they last about 50 minutes. Is the office nearby? Actually, it's across the street from my office, so it's really convenient. You can't beat that. Yeah, and it should help me get back to where I was before the accident. And I really want to play tennis again. Well, maybe now at least I have a chance to beat you. <laughs> In your dreams. Okay. Ready? Or not ready? Well. Ready, teacher. Okay, perfect. All right, guys, let me check your scores, okay? No, no. Let me see. Um, yes, this was easier than the previous one. I can see it. Okay. All right, guys, we're going to practice speaking just for about uh, 10 minutes, okay, or less. Um, okay, so for the speaking time, what we're going to practice today are those three questions, okay? Which is more important in any job, right? What do you think? Qualifications, personality, or practical experience? Mm -hmm. Which is more important? Qualifications, personality, or practical experience, and why? Hmm? Maybe it depends. Oh, sorry, you first. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, I think uh, it's very important uh, practical experience uh -huh. because in all of job or application job, I see. Uh, please, um, uh, they. Uh, how do you say ellos solicitan? They request? Yes, they request uh, a time of of sparing in the area. Okay. 
-hmm. Okay. All right, Mayra. <clears throat> so Mayra says practical experience. Okay. In my case, uh, in my in the company, say the the personal is very important. Uh, the the attitude of the people always uh, mm -hmm. available for for the yo and two important the practical experience. Mm -hmm. So in this case, Carlos, if you had to choose one personality or practical experience which is more important the person the personality personality okay tony maybe depends um the job mm -hmm. because i think that uh, if you need uh something specialized in um maybe in, in the labs or mm -hmm. in the scientific uh, area is mm -hmm. so much necessary, the qualification, because you mm -hmm. need to know about the product, about the process, uh, or maybe the, the standardizations or the norms like ESO um, and, and another ones. Yes. Um, if you need a person to manage or to lead how do you say liderar to lead your lead. net yes to lead, lead, to lead um, people especially when it's uh, um, uh, vendors or in sales you need a personality because this um, perform uh, the, the personality perform the the uh, the way that you go to to improve up to um explode the potential of the people and mm -hmm. the practical experience is the it depends too of the job maybe you need um if you are talking about of uh soccer teams you need a person with practical experience like the the players or the uh, the director the um, um el como el, el the el, the trainer the trainer or the the coach cuando hablamos de Pep Guardiola se me ha ido el nombre eh, eh, the, eh, the um direct director technical maybe this oh. is a same mm -hmm. it depends the the, the job it depends on the, the three are the so so important mm -hmm. and if you had to choose one tony in, in my general case, uh, in my case i mean in my sales experience uh is the practical experience okay practical experience okay somebody else Okay, so let's see, Carla, what do you think? I, I think they funny <laughs> because uh, I think we have a high quality for a, a apply a, any job. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you only have a, a theory mm -hmm. and you no know, experience. Uh, it's um, so yeah. We it don't is, nothing. <laughs> we we don't okay. We don't know. We don't know. Uh huh. Nothing or anything? Anything. Anything, okay. Anything. Uh -huh. anything. Yes, okay. Uh-huh. But in my experience, I think practical experience. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. But 
but it depends the oh, job. <laughs> Yes, it depends on the job, but I think that yes, practical experience. Uh -huh. oh, other case, other case, uh, independent. Some companies have for experience and um, practice, and other practice and aptitude. Independent. Mm. Yes. Yeah. yes, yes, that is true. It depends on the type of job, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, and. In your opinion, okay, in your opinion, what type of jobs should be most highly value and paid? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Oops. Mm -hmm. Doctors. <laughs> Doctors, okay. Pilots. Pilots, absolutely. Uh, right now, it is very famous that um, influencers, <laughs> they, <laughs> they, won, they win a lot of money <laughs> than doctors or or any yes mm -hmm. it is it is yeah, like it yes i mean i think that um okay so what maida said i think that it is true right influencers they earn more than somebody that that has studied maybe because the publicity uh, sells Sell more, <laughs> mm -hmm, okay. but I think not all the influencers, only the most popular. Correct, Tony. It's a controversial, controversial um, ask, but I think that the politicians are, in this case, the most high value and paid. <laughs> Not only in El Salvador, I talk mm -hmm. about around the world. Maybe yeah. you remember the the ex president or the former president Donald Trump. Yes. Uh, uh, he received so much money in in the church, uh, like president, but it's controversial and famous and and is not necessarily have so much knowledge about the politicians mm -hmm. maybe for for uh for for say uh one example okay to say to say one to say, example. Uh, to say thank you uh -huh. okay to yeah. through through father on the country <laughs> Tony <laughs> yes could you repeat please I, I don't listen to you to, to fire on the country. Oh. <laughs> fire on the... <laughs> Come on, okay. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> okay. I, well, I say another example, but but no. Uh, I mean, um, I, I mean, case I drink. <laughs> <laughs> to no incommodate anything. To, to no. Para, para no incomodar a nadie. Para, ah, no sé si lo dije bien. Yes. Okay. All right. So don't worry, guys. Then uh, just because of the time, we are going to stop right here. Okay. But I'll see you back tomorrow. Tomorrow, we are going to practice speaking. Okay. So please try to connect on time. Okay. And do not forget to work on the platform. Okay, guys. I'll see you back tomorrow. Thank you for being responsible and connecting. Then I hope you have a good night, guys. Take care. Okay. Bye. See you tomorrow, guys. Take care. Bye-bye, Miss. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye-bye, guys. See you. See you, guys.